Hello there, great to see you all this morning. Just trying to make the green button work. It's green button. Green button. There we go, green button. Uh, so, at Canva, we don't actually like the word disruptive because it's kind of, it's a very destructive term, it's very messy. Uh, and that's not really what our company's about. We, we like to think of our mission as being constructive. And our mission is to improve the world by democratizing design. And it's kind of a big and bold statement, but that's the way we like it. It's, it's innovative and it's helping people live better lives. Canva's going, if I can be so humble, uh, Canva's going amazingly well. Um, it's growing like a weed, not like a bad weed. You can maybe think of a weed that's like really, really ridiculously good looking. But uh, Canva is not the first time I've tried to change the world. Uh, it's actually my third attempt. And my other two attempts didn't go so well. So today for my startup story, I thought I'd tell you about three lessons that I've learned, one from each of my experiences about innovation and starting a new company. The first of those lessons comes from Google. Uh, and I don't mean I Googled for an awesome startup story. I actually worked there for three and a half years. And I worked on a product there called Google Wave. And Google Wave was a really ambitious attempt to reimagine what communication should be in today's age. And back in 2007, communication was something that really needed reimagination. We didn't have Slack, we didn't have Snapchat, Twitter didn't even have hashtags yet. And about the same time, uh, the Google App Suite was actually in a bit of a political quagmire. So they hadn't made any great product progress for over a year. And it was the perfect time for Lars and Jens Rasmussen, uh, co-founders of Google Maps, to approach Larry and Sergey, uh, the, the two founders of Google, and tell them about this radical idea they had to revolutionize communication and collaboration. They got the green light for that project. But to avoid all the political machinations happening in Mountain View, uh, Google Wave was an entirely secret project run out of the Sydney office. No one in the entire company knew about it, except Larry, Sergey, and everyone who was working on it in Sydney. Uh, we actually had entirely different management structure. We had a different reward structure. We had very little oversight. It was actually an attempt by Google to kind of recapture the spirit of a startup at a big company. However, at a normal startup, there's one thing that probably influences the direction of your company more than any other, and that's constraints. At a startup, you don't have any money, you don't have any people, you don't have any attention, you don't have a marketing department, you don't have accounting, you probably don't even start off with an office. And all that influences what you eventually end up building. As a startup inside Google, we pretty much had the world. We had the largest computing network in the world to run our servers off. We had access to some of the best engineering talent in the world. We actually had 50 engineers working on an unreleased product. Uh, and of course, we had the funds behind us of you know, what Google can offer. We also had you know, marketing, we had free press, and we even had an office, which even had free lunch. The beauty of our constraints is it really makes you focus on what you're actually doing. When you don't have constraints, you tend to over-engineer things. You put in too many features, you over-polish things. You end up building an ivory tower, which is exactly what we did on Google Wave. It had a thousand brilliant things in it, and it could scale to millions of users on our very first day. But when those users actually got into the product, it was so overwhelming, they didn't know what the purpose of it was. At Canva, we use constraints to really focus on what we're building. So on the day of the Canva launch, we had four engineers and one year's uh, runway in the bank. And the gushing sound of an emptying bank account is a really great motivator. Um, and the way that we use constraints is it helps us focus on what features are we going to build. You know, what is the smallest amount of steps that we have to take to create a compelling product? So my first lesson is that constraints are good. My second lesson comes from uh, what happened after Google Wave. So I left Google with two of my compatriots from Google Wave, 
and we decided to take another run at communications. And we built a product called Fluent, uh, which focused on email, built on top of the email protocol, but gave you a new way of consuming and interacting with it. It was actually quite a bit like Google Inbox, which was released three years later. Uh, and from a product and a technical perspective, we really nailed it. We had a bunch of passionate users who couldn't wait for us to scale up. But through our own inexperience, and just a sort of a lack of focus on this particular area, we made some really serious business errors. One of these was sending two-thirds of our team over to Silicon Valley to raise finance for three months, during which time no product progress was made, and we burned through a lot of our savings just running through our server costs. The media has kind of like built up this big mythology about a lone tech genius who creates an app and out of that they build a multi-billion dollar company. But the reality is that behind that person there's always someone who's selling that product and building the business that can make that product run. And that's kind of what I learned from my experience with Fluent is that you really need a team that can build a business, not just a product. And businesses come in all shapes and forms. You know, some businesses don't even make money. But for the business that you want to build, you need the team that has the right skills that can spread across both business, finance, operations, every aspect of the business, not just what you're building. Uh, my very last lesson I actually learned uh, quite recently. And one of our investors recently had their Christmas party. And at that party, they were talking about their thesis behind their investments. What makes them put a bet on a company that's going to change the world? And they said that the reason they invest in the company is that they fund people who are doing their life's work. And the reason they do this is because the founders who are doing their life's work are going to build a company that has longevity and they're not going to be distracted by anything else. When you're building a great company, you know, you have to grow a great company and there's lots of steps along the way. And there's lots of challenges that you're going to meet. Big challenges that are going to cause you a lot of stress, maybe make you want to quit. And there's also going to be a lot of opportunities along the way that are going to distract you. You know, a very small one very early on might be that you get a great job offer from a very stable company with a really decent signing bonus. You know, if you're two months into your company and someone sends you a $300,000 job, you might just take that. Further along the road, you might get a multi-million dollar acquisition offer from Facebook. You know, that's a very tempting thing to take, but it's not going to help you build a great company. Or an even greater risk is that you just might get bored of your idea if you're not that passionate about it. Our CEO, Melanie Perkins, has been dreaming about democratizing design since she was 19. I've been creating products that help people do creative things for 15 years. So we all see Canva as being part of our life's work. And that's what drives us to create a great company based around our mission. It, it's what, it, what keeps us going when we come up against challenges that look insurmountable. Uh, and it also keeps us going when we see a golden carrot lying, lying on the road something that could distract us from our mission but is really tempting. You know, thinking about your life's work and what you're really passionately building is ultimately what helps you build a great company. So, if you haven't designed out for the last 10 minutes, I'll just run you through three points that you really need to take away from my uh, little talk. Number one, constraints create better companies. If you don't have constraints, all your effort will fill that space. If you are unconstrained, you will put as many features as you can into that space. Number two, the right team really matters. Having the right team with the right skill set that isn't just focused on product, but is focused on every aspect of the business, whether it's building a team, focusing on finances, figuring out what the marketing should be, making sure the day-to-day -day business just runs. You need that in order to have a great business. And number three, make sure you're doing your life's work. Make sure you're doing something that you're truly passionate about, not something where you're just punching in and trying to make a dollar for the day. Thank you.